All right, hello everybody. I think this is uh welcome to session 20. So yeah, we're gonna continue to work on Unity and we are going to work on our region and hopefully have a name today for our region that Unity is set within. So hello everybody, I'm David and uh, I'll be with you for the next couple of hours and we're gonna work on our fantasy ground setting so i'm looking forward to it it's been fun we've actually uh in just a couple of sessions we've actually got quite a bit done uh this week will probably be the last week of general brainstorming and then next week i will start kind of putting everything together fleshing everything out and uh, putting it on what we have uh, from Josh for our region map and our town map. So yeah, I'm definitely, definitely coming along. You know, this is definitely a long-term work in progress. So, but we've actually got quite a bit done, uh, especially last week. Last week was the first week that the show was kind of taken back an hour for a total of two hours. And it's it's uh, it's a lot more beneficial for me for creating content to, to work on this two hours a week instead of just one. So, yeah. So if you folks have any uh, questions or comments, please feel free to put them into the chat. And uh, I'll answer them when I get to a pretty good stopping point. Uh, so, Cylindrical, to answer your question, of course, there's a stream today. There's a stream just about every Friday. And uh, if there wasn't, the stream wouldn't be live. So, definitely, definitely a show today. Hey, John. Hey, Bell. How's it going? David, how's it going? Chad over on Facebook. Drake, what's going on? Always good to see everybody hang out. So, all right. So where we kind of uh, left off last week was kind of fleshing out the town of Unity. And the town of Unity is actually in really good shape. Uh, I, was, I was hoping to have around 20, 20 locations maximum. And looks like we have 19, which is which is spot on. But as I'm as I'm thinking during the week, thinking ah, there's we have everything. We have everything from a couple of different taverns and inns. We have our uh, constable's office, our Law and Order, which is going to have our, our jail, etc. Maybe a little, maybe even a little small courtroom for justice. We've got our smithy or stable. We've got magic items and other gadgets. We got a, we're going to have a town market. We're going to have a uh, place of worship for multiple uh, deities. We're going to have an empty building, which is going to be basically a reward for your players and then they they can do with it as they wish uh, there's a general store a grocer with a bakery and butchery sort of like a super walmart but not with yeah sort of like a big old grocery store i would i would imagine <laughs> every town needs one right especially with the free, fresh baked goods uh, we have a fishery uh, let's see we also have uh, the Fantasy Grounds Academy was added last week. I think that was a great idea. So the Fantasy Grounds Academy is going to be located in the town of Unity, and I believe they're going to have a couple of locations around our region as well. Uh, we're going to have a town fountain and a well. I don't know. Maybe we'll do something. We'll probably do. Uh, I got a couple of ideas already what I'll do with that. Uh, we're going to have a, a Thieves Guild, possibly. Uh, it will be an underground, sort of like a secret network, I guess, or like a uh, 
maybe something like the Zentarum or something like that. Uh, we're going to have a production mill. Got to have a barrel and cart maker for all this production going on in Unity. And a theater, an amphitheater. So I came up during the week. I had, I had one idea that I really wanted to do. And I want to add a bathhouse to Unity. And I'm going to put this down. And I want to dedicate this to one of my players that has been around with me for a long time. And I'm talking like five, six years. And uh, if any of any of you have watched any of my games, um, I have a character that everybody, ad everybody adores called Omi Barton. And I'm, I'm going to actually make him an NPC in, in Unity. I may also make another one of my, another one of my friends as well that was one of my players for many years. Actually, uh, Omi Barton and Zero Ten, they both came into one of my games at the same time about, I'd say six years ago, maybe even longer than that. And uh, Zero Ten is a sorcerer, and Omi Barton was a bard. So we're gonna have a we're gonna have a bathhouse. I'm gonna put a bathhouse in Unity. That'll be location number twenty, within the interior of Unity. And <laughs> I'm gonna call it, call it the Rubba Dub Bathhouse, the Rubba Dub Dub Bathhouse, and. Uh, this is going to be owned by uh, the proprietor will be Omi Barton. And then I'll get with uh, my friend Will and I'll kind of flesh everything out with, uh, with the bathhouse as well. But yeah, we, we had a really fun encounter one time in a, uh, in a town that I had created and yeah, that that was that was pretty fun. That came to my mind, and I'm like, you know what? That would be really cool. So, all right. So that is what I wanted to do first was kind of add uh, the bathhouse, which I think that kind of really rounds out the town of Unity. To be honest, I mean, this is like a very this is going to be a very well put together town. And uh, I really appreciate everybody's input last week as well. So next, uh, I want to mention a great idea that uh, Bell had last week. And that is to do a giveaway or two or three. And the giveaway will be you, the viewer, will get to name an NPC and I'll see if we can get some artwork for you. Uh, I'm sh I don't I don't think there will be a problem with that. Uh, so we'll get you like an avatar picture made of your NPC. And so the giveaway is going to be if, if you win in our social media giveaway, then you will get to create your NPC like I mentioned, and then you'll get to have one of the locations inside of Unity, or if you want your NPC to maybe be in one of the other smaller towns that I'm going to have in our region, which I plan on probably having maybe three or four really small towns. But Unity will be the central hub of our region, which our region will be about probably 250 miles maximum by 250 miles maximum north to south to east and west respectively and you can get a general idea of what what this region map will look like if you go to google images and do a search for nenter vale n-e-n-t-i-r vale nenter vale was the default setting for Dungeons and Dragons 4th edition. It was in all of the core books, all of the uh, 
uh, D&D Essentials that came out towards the end of the lifespan of D&D 4E. And uh, ever since 4E was out, I've, I always just loved that little setting. It was cre- I believe it was created by Mike Merles. And instead of having a massive 3,000 mile by 3,000 mile area like Faerun or the Forgotten Realms which is usually the default setting for, you know, every D&D edition. I really liked the Nintervale because it was very short, compact, and there was a lot of content within that 200, 250, 200, 250-ish mile uh, radius of the Nintervale. Uh, so I always told myself, you know, that's a great idea. And if I ever decided to, you know, create content and put my thoughts in the words. And I would, I would do a smaller region like that. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I would do. So, uh, yeah, you'll be able to take one of the locations that are not, that are, you know, that isn't already taken in the town of unity or if you want your NPC to be a hero somewhere around our region or our little world, or if you want to be a villain, uh, you can do that as well. So I think that's a good idea. We'll, we'll come up with something, uh, some type of system for the giveaway, probably in the next week or two. Uh, but I think that's a good idea for sure. So I really appreciate it. Paulette coming up with uh, with that ideal that idea. I think that was I think that's amazing. Plus it lets us give back to the to the community as well. So all right. So I mentioned the possible giveaway. And today, now that I've got the rub a dub bathhouse on the town of unity. We're not going to be working on the town of unity. We will be kind of working on, on the region uh, that unity is located in. Because now that, now that we pretty much have the town of unity created that, you know, the base template for unity and sort of like the small little outskirt area of unity, I want to start working on the region So the first thing I want to do is come up with a regional name for our region uh, that's a work in progress. So so I'm going to go to the chat. I'm going to ask you folks for some help. So what is a great, what do you think a great name would be for a region or our setting? And I would like to try to keep it fantasy grounds related. Yeah, so, of course, obviously, our town is called Unity. I mean, I think that was that was just a no-brainer to name the town Unity. I mean, uh, just a no-name. No, no I mean, that's just a no-brainer. So let's come up with some names for our region, all right? And then uh, as we're kind of putting some ideas into our chat here that everybody can see now, I'll go ahead and I'll I'll answer a couple of questions that are in chat. So uh, Todd Waldman, is there any settings you can change to reduce how much computer power Fantasy Grounds uses? No, there's there's no settings. the program over the last year it's been released has been optimized really, uh, really almost to the max. So you, you shouldn't be getting a lot of uh, CPU usage when you have Fantasy Grounds uh, running. I don't know, maybe uh, are is your computer up to spec uh, for minimum requirements and all that stuff? What? I mean, what OS are you using? Are you on Windows? Are you on Linux? Are you on Mac? We've seen some users that are that are using Linux have a little bit more uh, power usage. But other than that, I, I haven't heard any reports on PC or, or Mac or anything like that. So, 
Drake, you thought the uh, audio was messed up, but it wasn't. It was your settings, huh? Hmm. Bell asks, will the bathhouse have spoons? I'm sure there will be something spoon-related. Drake, can you get your horse a bath at the bath bathhouse too? A drive through of sorts? No, probably not. I would probably say you can get your horse taken care of at the stable because we actually have a dedicated stable in Unity. A drive through is a good. A drive through is a great idea, though. Players' Rome, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Joseph? Joseph is a uh, one of our employees here at Fantasy Grounds, and. Joe's asking to be the town chaplain by day and moonlight as Jodas the necromancer at night in the secret hidden temple. I, I like that, Joe. That's a great idea, Joe. And uh, we'll get together and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that for sure. But I, I definitely love that idea. <laughs> I love it. By day, he's the town chaplain and by night, he is the necromancer. <laughs> nice. I love it. Your avatar is awesome, Joe. I, I love the avatar. So Drake's saying there's a smaller, very rural town uh, not too far away named Classico Village. It ha it's, uh, it's got a primitive feel to it. Well, that's uh, something that we could do, Drake, because... Uh, you are one of our VIP backers, so I'm going to give all of our VIP backers an opportunity to come up with something also in uh, our regional setting map. So, and also Unity if if you want it there. So, so I got a. Uh, I'm also taking a couple notes here as well. So that's why my talking may be a little bit uh, erratic. that I am here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Slayer's Realm says the mayor of villain in the town of division. That's a good look. That, I like that too. That's a, uh, that's a great idea. Uh, Slayer's Realm. Kind of uh, the opposite of unity, right? Division. I like that idea. Maybe we can uh, come up with something small little town. Maybe, yeah, I, I think that would be a good idea. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Virtuterra, Virtuterra. Would that be the town name there, Drake? VTT for short? <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like it. So you're talking about the, um, the region, right? Virtuterra. Man, that, that sounds like an evil place, doesn't it? VTT for short. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Slayer's Realm, can you gift apps from the foundry or the gold coins from the forge? No. Uh, when you, when you, not, not that I know, unless, uh, unless that has been added within the last couple of days. Uh, no, I don't think, no, you can't do that. However, uh, you can go to our forum, Slayer's Realm, and we do have a Fantasy Grounds Forge Wanted, uh, a list for, you know, people that would like to see features added in the future. And uh, feel free to post your, your idea there. So, yeah, definitely. Good, just go to the Fantasy Grounds uh, forums and then just scroll down and, Find the uh, Fantasy Grounds Forge House of Healing. And then inside of the Forge House of Healing, there uh, is a uh, wish list for uh, future features. So, <clears throat> Simple DM, what's going on, Simple DM? I know who you are. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to have caves, ruins. Um, mountain ranges, a couple of lakes, all those type of regional features we'll have on a regional map slayer, that's for sure. 
I don't, you know what, Chad? That's a great idea. The grounds of fantasy. I like that. I think that's a great idea. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that down. I'm just gonna take a note of that. But I, I do like that. That's that's a great idea. I also thought of uh, <laughs> a couple of a uh, couple of names that I'll kind of announce here in a little bit. But I kind of like the grounds of fantasy. That's 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 pretty cool. So any other any other ideas? <laughs> uh nice Drake. The grounds of fantasy on the planet of Virtue Terra. <laughs> nice. Hey Dan, what's going on? Good to see you, Dan. Hey to you as well. Oh, the wife waits. Yeah, don't keep the wife waiting. Uh you got Unity? Awesome, man. Awesome, Dan. That's definitely the uh the future of Fantasy Grounds, that's for sure. Did did you pick it up when it was on sale? Hopefully you did. Because it, it I don't think it'll be on sale for uh probably until the big end of the year sale, so awesome. All right, so uh you know, I kind of I kind of like that name. Uh, I also have uh, Davison Land for Doug. I mean, it, it's kind of corny, but you know that's that's what games are, right? You know, you're supposed to have fun. Things can be corny, stuff like that. Yeah, you got the upgrade deal, and then you should have got a discount, another discount, if the license was still on sale. So, I mean, you could have saved if you did. I mean, you'll get if you got Unity class i mean if you got classic ultimate then yeah you would have got just by default 50 percent off but if you would have got it during the sale the sale price would have also stacked so dugland that's pretty good <laughs> how about dugland's folly <laughs> Duglin, dugland's folly that that would be pretty cool <laughs> We'll kind of put down Douglas Folly as well. So we've got we've got some information already for our regional map. And we're about actually making really good time. So we'll spend about the next hour or so working on some of the features of of our map. Maybe maybe the grounds of fantasy or Douglas Folly. So somebody had also uh also came up with the name Fantasia which which is pretty good. I mean, obviously fantasy uh, fantasy grounds, fantasy games. So I'm going to put the grounds of fantasy up here. And then, you know, this is all brainstorming stuff. This this uh story journal that I have up here, this is all ideas. And then starting next, starting next week, I'll start doing more of the actual construction of the town with, you know, the base map. Also, kind of maybe fleshing out more of the actual locations. I know that Derek was interested in, in um, doing the... Uh, the item store. I'll get with Joe. He can be the uh, the caretaker of. He could be like the uh, the caretaker of the graveyard or something. Or and then we'll, you know, get him get him going with his uh, secret hidden temple. Maybe with the evil deities like we had talked about with our places of worship last week. We want to have something that will you know, cater to all of the different, you know, the religions and, and, and deities and stuff. So I think, you know, having the evil temple of worship, maybe in the maybe underground or maybe some 
in some hidden caves somewhere in the region or something like that. I think that's a great idea. And I'll get with Joe on that. So I know that I'm going to keep Doug as the, uh, the leader or the jefe of uh, our town of Unity. So I think that's good. I'd, I'd like to do, I'd like to have John or Moon Wizard is Sworn's name. I'd like to have him uh, like the, the sheriff or the lawman of, of Unity. And yeah, we have some, I have, uh, I got some info from Paulette. So we'll, we'll work Paulette in. We'll also work in, uh, I believe that jo our, our one of our newest employees, Joshua, has gotten me some information. Brad has gotten me information on his bard, Brad the Bard. So he will be a, a mainstay of Unity as well. Uh, Carl has gotten me some information from an old from an old character that he played in the '90s, I believe, and he just gave me the character sheet and he goes, "Do what you want with it." And I was like, all right, this is cool. So I'll, I'll be uh, working his character in as well. So yeah, next week we'll just do some more brainstorming with mostly with the, with the, uh, the region. Because we haven't really done much with the region. Now, Unity, like I mentioned, it's, it's really nice. It's in good shape. And the outskirts of Unity are in really good shape as well so yeah just for working on this for a couple weeks it, it's it's coming along really well and there's a lot of work to you know creating content there is a lot of work and i'm gonna have to do a lot of this off offline and off stream just so i can get everything you know fully fleshed out so I can edit it, I can proofread it, and then we'll just basically brainstorm on the streams. Uh, I'd, I'd like to work on this three times a month, you know. And plus, once we have the region more, you know, with more locales and, you know, stuff like that, then we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll kind of start working on some adventures and stuff but but then again i'll be working on adventures and also hook points and stuff as i'm working on the town of unity where i'm fully fleshing it out because our our employees and hopefully our vip backers will also give us uh, will give me some some uh, adventure ideas as well for for what they envision their npc uh, to be so yeah so we got the grounds of uh so i'm gonna put the grounds of fantasy up here i like that we have douglin's folly <laughs> I, I you know what i actually really like douglin's folly as well that that's a great name uh, let's see yeah take it easy dan good seeing you man yeah i i, I saw that you emailed me dan in case you're still here and uh, I'll uh, I'll shoot you an email, Dan, about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Simple DMs is a uh, Fantasia, not me, but cool with me. Drake Drake says the Middleton Mines. <laughs> it's kind of got a ring to it. You know what? Yeah, because I've got. I've got my NPC that I, well, my piece of art, his name is Snaggletooth. He has always been a villain in my campaigns that I've ran in the past. And in fact, I haven't done anything with Snaggletooth in probably several years now. But maybe, maybe I'll, I'll definitely do something with Snaggletooth, but I haven't really thought about what I want to do with with him yet, but let's see. Uh, Middleton Mines. So we have our quarry and mining. I'll just kind of put the Middleton Mines here. That's kind of cool. I mean, it sounds uh, it's, it's kind of got a ring to it. So 
So I'll just kind of put the Middleton Mines question mark. <laughs> Simple man. Four stars, Middleton Mines. <laughs> Bell says a secret tunnel from the Knot House Tavern. It's possible, that's for sure. I don't even think we have any names for our taverns yet. But I believe Bell, you wanted to stick with being one of the one of the barmaids in the in the tavern. If I'm not mistaken, that's what you that's what you wanted to stay with. Chad, what's going on, Chad Hill over on Facebook? What about a, a tannery on the far outskirts of town? I think that's a great idea because we don't have uh well we kind of have a tannery with uh Dominic. I'm kind of making him the Super Walmart of crafting to where you'll be able to have all of your crafting needs met in the town of Unity. But I think just a pure banner would work also in another small town. I think that would work. Nicely, yeah, Brad the Singing Bard. <laughs> that was good. That was a great little video I put together. So yeah, let's, uh, we've got some town names. We mentioned some, as we're kind of brainstorming with the, uh, the regional map here, we've got some town names already. Uh, uh, Davigori, Gresson, Righteous. I like Righteous, that's a good one. Uh, Clacton. Middletown, Middle Grounds, uh, Targo, Fentaria, Sienta, Stargazer Park. I like that as well. Uh, Meridian, I like that. Uh, Reestone, I, I like all these. Uh, Something's Forge, uh, Twin Peaks. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a mountain range called Twin Peaks. Hopefully we won't get uh, a cease and desist from the Twin Peaks restaurants. Uh, Twin Towns. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Milo Whistle uh, Whistle Pot is the name of the Unity Bard. Yeah, played played by Brad the Bard. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, I've got quite a few uh, backgrounds yet, so that'll be good. I'll start. I'll try to work in at least one a week so I can fully flesh it out. But I think once once we get, uh, I know Josh has been working on a couple of maps. And I've, I've got a, a dot .mod file from him already uh, that's been updated. So well, I, I, would, I would say once we get the entire town of Unity flushed out and the Unity, well, and the regional map, the basics of the Unity map. The, well, I'm sorry, the regional map. I think that's what I'll probably put the first iteration or the first version of our setting up on the forge. But I would definitely like to have everything complete with the town of Unity. But of course, you know, the, the basics of, you know, what all the buildings and, you know, info that you can read to your players as they approach and once they enter. Uh, and then next week, I'll kind of talk about the format of how, because I want to have a structured format as well when it comes to all of the locations, whether it be... Um, one of the locations inside of Unity or one of the uh, locations uh, in our region. But I, yeah, I, I just want to keep a sort of like a, a structure to that. <clears throat> so I'll kind of go over the, I kind of put together a template on paper already of how I want to structure each location uh, and uh, I'll go into that more next week. So, because next week I, I actually plan on putting 
the map and content starting to put that together S just stitching it together i think that will i think that will be a great time to to start it because we you know with uh with the time that we have left today we should be able to get a pretty pretty good sense of the region and you know the surroundings of unity and stuff so i think that's next week will be a good time to start that so all right so we've got some location names inside of the regional map uh tankle falls polling springs sorrows forge hammerstone forge uh pussycat taverns <laughs> who who came up with that name pussycat taverns i think that might have been was that was that i can't i think it might have been dark dark i think i think it might have been him the frost mountains um and also i kind of took a little note here do we want any roads leading off of the map to other lands i would say yes i mean it would make sense to have maybe a road going off north south east west in all of the cardinal directions i think that would that would be cool too but then once you leave our region then it would be up to the game master or the dungeon master to come up with the, the content on their own because i i personally don't want to work on multiple regions i mean this this region that i'm going to be working on is going to take long enough as it is and it's like i've mentioned multiple times this is going to be a very long-term work in progress so yes i don't want to do regional multiple regional maps i, I just want to stick with one and i want to flesh it out to the max that i can uh, within the confines of our regional map which like i mentioned should be about about 250 ish miles by 200 to 250 ish miles from uh, east to west and, and north to south so it will be a uh yeah it'll be a jam-packed area just like just like the ninter veil so or the sword coast if you look at it that way or any of the regions within Galarion, because Pathfinder does an amazing job uh, flushing out their regions as well, just like D and D and you know Triple uh, Ace games with Hellfrost. Uh, yeah, the Thirteenth Age, they've done a great job with their with their region. I mean, every game that comes out, they do such a great job and put such an amount of time and effort into these regions. And, you know, I want to do the same thing for this. Uh, Drake says the mines produce digital min <laughs> digital minerals. So we'll be we'll be farming our Dogecoin and we'll be we'll be mining our our Shiba coins. But Shiba's really had a good couple of days. Holy cow. I got like 10, 10 million Shiba coins for like 150 bucks. It's already like tripled in money in a couple of weeks. I can't believe it. So Drake, you, yeah, you sent me some info in uh, Discord. Yeah. Yeah, I saw, I saw that you sent me a message. I'll have to check it out here in a little bit. And yeah, I've got to go back and re-watch the stream with Josh's map making. I gotta go back and watch it again, so. But whatever Josh makes is what I'm, this is, uh, whatever Josh makes is what I'm conforming the content to. So, but I will have to get, uh, it's been about, I think it's been about a week and a half, two weeks since I've last talked to Josh. So I'll have to get with him and give him all of the locations of, of Unity. And then I'll start giving him like regional areas of like maybe a swamp or what, and wherever he decides to put it, that's fine. I'm cool with that. Josh, I mean, I, 
Josh is an amazing artist, and anything he does is is golden anyway. So yeah. Uh, that that is pretty good though, Drake. Mining coins <laughs> for the treasury. <laughs> ah, the treasury on the forge. Nice. <laughs> nice. Drake says, please say it's not bagpipes that the bard plays. <laughs> so, so what? It, what is it, Brad? Are you playing bagpipes or or what? <laughs> No problem, Dan. Yeah, Bill. Uh, yeah, yeah. He he sent me the updated file, and uh, I'll be I'll be working with that next week. David Lynch, yeah, with the uh, what Twin? I think David Lynch was a uh, what the uh, creator of Twin Peaks or something like that. I think he's getting up there. Lynch is. Drake Jake says, uh, Deadlands, they have a tavern that sells a sandwich called a Benny. You can eat it for any meal. <laughs> I like that. That's a great idea. The Benny. Can we get the Benny? I like that. I would, I would imagine, I would imagine they have sherry pie. I would, why not? I mean, it's too dry for pie. I don't think, well... I don't think there's going to be any, really any desert area in our region, so it will probably be, I'm sure there will be plenty of hydration and humidity for pie. <laughs> Agent Cooper lives, simple DM. <laughs> quest windows in, into the quest window. Cobble realms. That's a good uh, region name suggestion as well, Slayer. We'll put that down. That's a good name. There we go. Forge coins, a tiny violin, and thumb, th thumb symbols. Thimbles. Is it symbols or thimbles? I think. Oh. It might, yeah, probably a oh th thumb symbols, sort of like on the the little monkey dog on the what was that battery commercial where the monkey with the creepy face would have the little uh, symbols on his either his hands or clapping them together. I remember that. That was a commercial from a long time ago. I, mean, I think it was a battery commercial. I don't know. Oh, so that's what uh, what Milo plays. I got, I got you, Brad. I got gotcha. you. I like that. Oh, <laughs> uh. all right. So, Energizer Bonnie, yeah, the Energizer Bonnie, uh, yeah. But this is like maybe it was the Energizer commercial that also had the. The little, the little like a uh, monkey doll or something. I think it was a monkey doll, and it was like creepy looking. It was like something like out of a horror movie. But I, I liked it though. Let's see. So we have some um, outskirt stuff too for Unity. We have our, our our graveyard. Just got a text notification, folks, from Chili's. So if you are signed up for texts from Chili's, you can celebrate the weekend with free chips and salsa, queso, or guac, and it is valid through Sunday. I haven't been to Chili's in a long time, so. But I do like Chili's, though. Chili's is really good. Uh, so we have our graveyard. I believe that uh, Joe is going to be involved in our graveyard. Uh, we've got our lumber mill. We've got a couple of, we'll have a mine and, a, you know, a quarry and stuff. And then uh, the wizard tower on the outskirts of Unity. <clears throat> so we've got some, we, we also have that uh, to take into consideration as well. And we'll add these locations on, on the map as well, wherever, wherever Josh wants to put them. 
not I'm not picky when it comes to that. But if there is something that I I think should kind of be in a certain point, I'll kind of I'll kind of run that by Josh. But for the most part, yeah. he's he's got he's got the eye for that kind of stuff. So, all right. So what do we think? What what kind of regions do we want? I mean, I know that we have some regional features here that we've already got. Like we've got maybe a frozen tundra to the north. Maybe winter is coming, uh, but I don't think we'll go that route. Uh, we've got several large lakes, several mountain ranges. Totally in agreement of that. Uh, a, me a possible mega dungeon, maybe. That would be a lot of work in itself. Ancient ruins, swamps. Yeah, I, I think having swamps, marshes, forests. I think all that stuff should be part. You know, a couple of mountain, maybe a mountain range on the edge of the map or something. Definitely things that I I want to keep and I definitely would like to have in the region. Uh. An island and a swamp. I don't see why not. Maybe that could be the entrance to an old city or the mega dungeon or whatever else, whatever else uh, I or we come up with. Uh, traversable river rivers. I yeah, definitely because Unity is going to have a river on the outskirts or going through it. I can't remember which. I think. I don't know, but I'll, I'll see whatever Josh has. So, uh, let's see. Graveyard for sure. Maybe we'll do a couple of other, maybe a battlefield graveyard or something like that. An underdark area. That's a whole nother world in itself. I mean, that's possible. Uh, but that would be an entire new region. So I'm kind of torn with that. Do I, I, I don't know if I want to do an underdark, underdark type of region. Uh, we could do something with a magical forge and a vol volcano. I think that's, I think that's a good idea for sure. So what else folks? I, I think that covers just about all of the different types of features in a region maybe we can kind of maybe narrow it down i definitely i definitely would like I, I don't know if i'm i don't know how i feel about the frozen tundra to the north i, I don't know i mean if we do that you know we could you know keep with do we want the roads leading off of the map one in each cardinal direction, north, south, east, and west, east and west. And we could have a road or you know a, a path leading into a kind of a frozen area, wintry area to the north. I don't know. Maybe it would be a wintry area to the west. Why does it have to be to the north? You know, maybe maybe it's to the south. I mean, north doesn't always have to be a sign for hey go north and you're gonna get colder <laughs> the climate will change if you head north hmm. so i don't know i'm kind of i'm kind of i don't know about the uh but i'm definitely gonna i'll definitely bold everything that i i definitely want so i definitely want several large lakes for sure that's that's bold that's gonna be bold several mountain ranges definitely bold that's for sure mega dungeon i don't know it's a lot of work but i'll definitely do some i'll definitely do something like that but i don't know if it's gonna be a mega dungeon don't expect a mega dungeon with like 16 levels i mean that's just gonna be ridiculous <laughs> i mean we could do a level and then maybe word gets out that hey another level was discovered later on down the line and do another one etc so definitely up with a i would say a swamp as in singular not plural so i would say sure we'll do sort of like a swamp and marsh in the same kind of like the same thing anyway so so we'll we'll kind of 
merge this together. We'll do one thing there. Forest, that's 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 definitely no brainer. Definitely want an island in the swamp. Uh, uh how I think what I think what I mentioned last week is we will do an island in the lake that is near that's actually near unity i think there's going to be a lake where unity is so i think we'll do island in unity lake well i think we'll kind of change that definitely bold it uh definitely want that Uh, the traversable rivers with some rapids <clears throat> that's possible also so i won't bold that uh, graveyards for sure maybe well because we've already got a graveyard in unity right on the outskirts of unity maybe we'll do like a uh, like i mentioned maybe we'll do a battlefield Maybe an old, maybe an old battlefield graveyard or something like that. So let's definitely do that. Under dark, under dark type of area. I, I don't know. That that's a lot of work. I mean, I don't mind doing some caves that descend down into darkness, and then you can give a very. You can say that there's a path leading off into the darkness, and then you don't know where it goes. Sort of like what other other games have done before and then it's up to the dm or what they want to add in uh magical forge in a vol volcano i don't know if we'll have a volcano let let's let's scratch the volcano the magical forge in a volcano however up here let's put Yeah, let, let's put Magical Forge hidden in one of the mountain ranges. I think this will do. I don't I, I don't think I want a volcano in in our area, in our region. So we'll definitely we'll definitely bold that. Maybe have maybe have one one mountain range, maybe two. But then again, it also depends on what Josh does as well. So I'll put one or maybe two mountain ranges. And this is all stuff that I'm gonna get with Josh with. Uh I'll send him an email this weekend and then early next week we'll get together and uh come up with some some ideas and stuff like that so i think that i think that'll be a good idea so all right so let's see what uh chat's got going on um uh, yeah the batteries died in the the uh the monkey i remember that the monkey just kind of stopped working yeah so Drake asked, does Unity have a Taco Tuesday? It's possible. I mean, it's up to what uh, the end proprietors want, for sure. I'm going to have to shut my door because my mother's nurse is here and they're just talking and they're loud. So I'll, I'll be just a second, folks. All right. Just had to just had to shut my door. So all right. Mythical forest forest that you always get lost in. Yeah, Slayer, that's uh pretty good. That's a pretty good idea. Ideas for locations. 
I like to write everything down. Definitely. Can can y'all hear that out there? My my mother and her nurse are popping those air bubble packs that you get in Amazon boxes. My my, my mom <laughs> or my mom's a dork. She loves popping those things. My dad did too. But they're out there having fun, giggling and popping popping those air pouches that they pack in boxes. <laughs> Uh, that's good. Ideas for locations. So we have, uh, yeah. If y'all have any ideas, put those put those in chat, and we'll talk about them and write them down. Mythical forest that you get lost in. You always get lost in. So let's see what else. Uh, thousand flocks of geese migrate to Unity every year. It's called the week of feces. <laughs> Jeez. Umbrella sales skyrocket. <laughs> oh, that's good, Drake. Mount Kicka. Kicka must starter. The mount the volcano can be called Mount Kickama Starter. <laughs> wah wah <laughs> nice drink. <laughs> uh, weird gravity area. Uh water runs uphill, stuff like that near a cave. It's a good idea as well, Slayer for sure. Water running uphill. <laughs> what, the geese are filled with uh, helium? Uh, you guys couldn't hear it? Yeah, probably not because when I upgraded all of my, my sound equipment, I put all kinds of like noise gates and filters and stuff, so. I didn't, they, they were pretty loud though. I didn't know if y'all had heard them or not. So, nah, bummer. Yeah, but they were out there giggling like a couple of uh, school kids out there popping those uh, air pockets. Mm -hmm. Ideas for locations, keep them coming. Keep them coming, folks. And thanks, everybody, for hanging out, by the way. Totally appreciate it. So let's see. I, I think, yeah, definitely, I don't know. I. What do you folks think about the frozen lands to the north? I, I don't know. I think that's been done a lot, although everything has been done a lot in RPGs especially in fantasy settings. So I don't know. I don't, I don't think we'll do any kind of frozen or wintry land. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to, I'll leave that on here, but I'm, I probably won't do anything with it. Definitely like the lake, several large lakes. Uh, yeah, just single mountain range or two. Maybe, maybe one of the mountain range kind of just kind of floats in from one of the corners. I think, I think that would, uh, I think that would be good. I just don't, I yeah, I, I just don't think we got enough room to be honest on a regional map to to do like a wintry area, and unless it's just at the very, very tip of the map it starts to transition into a cold region i mean unless we do something like that but yeah. <clears throat> i definitely like the uh the magical forge hidden in one of the mountain ranges i, I do like that i do like that definitely like that 
Uh, I, I like the idea of the Mega Dungeon also, but that is going to be a lot of work. When, you know, when people say Mega Dungeon, they think of like Emerald Spire, like 16 floors. They think of Undermountain, you know, what, 20 something floors, levels. You know, the new uh, Abomination Vaults from Pathfinder 2, their AP that came out earlier this year. And it had, what, 12 or 16 levels to it. And then each level being massive. You know, it, it's a lot of work doing one level of a dungeon, let alone, you know, 12, 12 to 16 levels. That's just, yeah, that's just uh, crazy. So. Yeah, I'm definitely going to take a note on that. I definitely want a compass, but I think Josh has probably already got a compass on the map. Because in in our in one of our art packs, there's a couple of different compasses, and they're beautiful compasses. So, well, I'm sure he'll put one of those on there. And you know what, Drake, you mentioned that that is that is like the first thing that came to mind to my mind when you know the magical forge was kind of mentioned last week was how we have the forge inside of you know fantasy grounds and fantasy grounds unity inside of the D, &D fifth edition rule set you know that that was what that is the first thing that came to mind and that's how that's how i envision doing some type of you know quest or something like that is how can I incorporate the fantasy grounds forge into the magical forge? I, I think that that's what, that's how I envisioned it. So I'm glad that you brought that up. So, yeah. So with the magical forge being hidden in one of the mountain ranges, that magical forge will kind of act like how the fantasy grounds forge works in our D&D 5th edition rule set. So, yeah, I, I think I think that's the route that we're going to go. And I kind of had my mind made up on that already. So, yeah. yeah that would, that would be kind of be cool to, you know, have an item that, you know, you could get and it would kind of grow with you. Sort of like, you know, special item. You know, and other, other games have done that. You know, in, in both, you know, dice throwing RPGs and online online games as well, MMOs. I've seen several items that will kind of advance in power as you advance in power. So I think something like that would be pretty cool. I think I think Pathfinder 2 in the advanced players guide i think there was a i think there was a chapter on an item that levels with you an item i think it was a weapon or something like that i don't know we'll have to i'll have to come up i'll have to think more in depth about it but but yeah drake definitely uh that was the first thing that came to mind when you know last week when someone mentioned you know a hidden forge inside of a inside of a volcano or a mountain range so i knew that's what i was going to do with it right, right as soon as that was as soon as soon as that was mentioned so <clears throat> nice great you have to you have to have an ultimate pass to get the other uh, forge well, actually, you don't need an ultimate license. You you just have to have the 5e rule set, which the 5e rule set is free. So everybody can have access to that quest. Yeah, uh, Slayer, that's... Uh, you brought up, you know, weather and stuff like that. That was one of the first things that I talked about. Well, that was one of the one of the things I talked about on the first day of creating this content. Uh, I you know I want 
I want encounters to be memorable. I just, I just, you know, after playing games for so many years, I mean, I've been playing D and D and dice games for over 30 years now and over 35 years. And I, I just don't want, I call them boring encounters. Oh, there's just three three goblins and you know one per player or two for every two for every three players or anything like that. I call those boring encounters. I just don't want boring encounters. Sure, you know that's what a lot of encounters are, but I want them to be memorable. I want them to be, you know, I want there to be environment environmental effects in a lot of encounters i want terrain features to be taken into consideration with you know encounters and stuff so you know i i need to i need to write that on because that's one thing that i didn't write um and i'll just i'll just kind of write encounters and encounters mean multiple things Encounters don't mean just three goblins or four goblins or, you know, six lizard men. Encounters mean a whole multitude of things. Wandering travelers, wandering merchants, you know, so I see encounters as a lot of different things besides just, you know, role initiative. So I'm going to put... I'm going to create a, an encounter section as well, which I think is definitely needed. So, but yeah, I, I've talked about uh, four uh, combat encounters, four encounters, including tactical combat. We will include. I knew I was gonna mess up typing eventually. I was gonna like, wow, I've I've gone like ten words without messing up. But as soon as I think that, wah wah, I mess up typing. I I do want uh terrain features. You know, like uh potholes or you know slope hills, all that kind of stuff, terrain features, traps, you know, maybe you just hit a random trap and there's a pit trap in the middle of your combat. I, I, I love terrain features and uh, environmental effects. Such as, hey, all of a sudden, Acid rain is coming down, or a lightning bolt strikes, or a massive gust of wind happens. That's the type of environmental effects that I want to include. So we'll do uh, wind gust, uh, acid rain. Etc. And uh, terrain features will will do stuff like um, pit traps, uneven ground. You know, we can have you know moist ground where you know you can slip and fall variables besides just boring combat uh, I also want to put some wandering uh, wandering traveler or merchants yeah exactly Slayer weather sweeping storm strong winds exactly yeah We'll put hail up here as well. I was actually pounced with hail when I first moved to El Paso. 
four years ago. Went outside, I heard something pounding on the roof. I thought somebody was jumping up on my roof. And I walked outside and there were just these golf ball and baseball sized hail bouncing off of the ground and splashing into the pool and stuff. And I'm like, holy cow. And what did I do? Duh. I walked right out into the middle of it like a dummy and got pounced. <laughs> I was like, uh, I think I need to get out of this because I had never seen anything like that. I had seen little pebble-sized hail that melted as soon as it hit the ground in Florida. But these were golf balls and baseball size. I mean, it was, it was crazy. Land of the Lost type area, secluded in a mountain with dinosaurs. And that's, that's a good idea, Slayer. That's, that's a good idea. I... I always loved, uh, what was it, Land of the Lost or something like that. I loved that old original uh, movie with the dinosaurs and the the horrible uh, dolls, and I mean, it, there wasn't even any CGI back then. It was just, it was it was horrible. And if I would go back, and I adored that show. I watched it every Saturday for a long time, and I loved that show. And I would never go back and watch it again because. Just like the D&D cartoon, I would be totally disappointed and say, what am I watching this garbage for? And uh, so I think I'll leave it. But I love The Land of the Lost. That was a great show. So, yeah, let's do uh, Wandering Travelers. Uh, dinosaurs. You know, and, 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 you know, you mentioned dinosaurs. I have a couple of friends that that I know that run games and they hate dinosaurs, especially I have a friend Warren. I haven't talked to him in a while, actually. He hates dinosaurs. He thinks dinosaurs and D and D are stupid. I don't, I personally like dinosaurs in, in D and D and it all, it all goes back to X one, right? Expert book one and basic D and D. Anybody anybody know what X1 is? Don't uh, oh, I guess you guys will just google it. The Isle of Dread. Dinosaurs in the Isle of Dread. I loved it as a kid. You know, running from running from T-Rexes and stuff. That was a uh, yeah, that was that was a uh, that was awesome. So I personally I love dinosaurs in D&D. So and X one was one of the one of the best one of the best modules of all time for me. So yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah geysers, all of that stuff. Geysers just kind of you know spewing up boiling hot water. I mean, just yeah, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, we'll put geyser down there too. A goiza, a goiza. Dinosaurs in the land of the lost. Yeah. Yeah. It was just even thinking of that just kind of makes me just cringe on what the graphics were back in the, in the seventies and eighties as a kid. Oh my goodness. So Drake is asking, uh, does fantasy grounds have any unique races? Are, are we going to have a unique race? Sure. I, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. We could. I mean, you know, like I mentioned though, Drake, this is going to be a a system agnostic setting. So it's not going to be bound to one rule set. You know, I don't want it just, hey, you have to use this with DD 5e, or you have to use this with just Savage Worlds or just Pathfinder. I don't want to do that. I want this to be able to be used in any any setting or or for any rule set for that matter and i and that was one of the first things i talked about on the first day of you know brainstorming all these ideas for you know creating content for for this world that we're creating so yeah 
definitely though, uh, definitely don't want it tied to one rule set. That is, that's definitely not, not even, not even been thought about. I want, I want it to be usable for anybody can download it from the forge, and it'll work in any rule set. <clears throat> but yeah, coming up with a unique race, sure. Yeah. So we'll have other ideas, and then we'll have some other ideas as well. I'll put a section for other ideas. And we'll go ahead and we'll bold this. I'll set it as a header, I'm sorry. All right. Set it as a header, Dave. You've done this before. Uh, custom race. Oops. Custom race for our world. It's possible for sure. Definitely in the realm of possibility. <clears throat> J Rock, what's going on? Oh, still working on uh, regional ideas and other ideas for our realm. Probably called the Grounds of Fantasy or Douglin's Folly. Kind of, kind of like that. I kind of like this too. I'm gonna not even mention the ones that I had. See. Multiple minds and multiple ideas are better than just one person working on something, so. Drake, you prefer uh, dinosaurs and Starfinder? Yeah, lasers attached to their head. Sort of like Dr. Evil and his uh, sharks with freaking lasers attached to their heads. <laughs> Cadillacs and dinosaurs on Jedi. I never heard of Cadillacs and dinosaurs. I never heard of that. Is that actually a real game, Jedi? I'll have to do a Google search for that later. <clears throat> just the river trip at the start of the land. Yeah, just just the intro to uh, the land of the lost would probably just make me turn the channel. <laughs> for sure. Hey, what's up, Derek? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I I'm a huge Swarms fan. You'll notice that in in the games that I run, I love to do swarms. I love swarms. I definitely love swarms. And in fact, for encounter, I'll put lots of swarms because I do like them. Uh, what is the uh, short? Shortcut key for copying text would just uh you can just highlight it and control C is that what you're talking about? And then you can control V to paste it. See. And then you can highlight and then control J and it'll put it into one one line, even though it was multiple lines before. So control C, control V, control J. Uh, you can also do uh, Control A, and it'll it'll copy everything. Uh, I'm not I'm not too sure on that, Slayer. If there's any kind of shortcut key for, I just use Control C for everything. I don't I don't yeah I just use Control C. Oh, you know what? I actually watched the very first episode of uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 a couple of a uh, couple of nights ago. It's cool to go way back, take that trip back on memory lane. I used to love watching that stuff at you know two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> A swarm of pirates, yeah. I, I've done swarms of zombies, swarms of goblins. I've done a lot of different swarms. 
And in fact, the first time I <laughs> I did a swarm of, uh, well, I think it was Bullywugs. And I had one of my players say, David, I don't see a swarm of bully bu Bullywugs in the Monster Manual. I'm like, what are you looking in the Monster Manual for? Because my swarm of Bullywugs was really, really working over the group. And so one of my players took it upon himself to open up the monster manual. And uh, I don't, I don't see, and these Bullywugs don't have sneak attack either. These Bullywugs, Bullywugs don't have any magic. They're not casting magic missile. They're not casting healing spells. They're not baning. They're not blessing. I'm like, well, don't look. <laughs> don't look in the monster manual. So player advice 101, if you are a player, and if you own the monster manual, do not look in it when your game master is running a game. Please don't do that. Game masters don't like that. Player Etiquacy 101. So that was a, that was an old game, huh? Yeah, Swarms of Pirates. That that's that's a great idea. I like that. Control J, I gotcha. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. <laughs> None of your business, you cheating fool. <laughs> nice Drake. That exactly. Aaron, what's going on over on Facebook? Yeah, definitely, Aaron. No metagaming. Please don't. Don't, you know, when I'm running the Lost Mine of Fandelver, please don't have your, you know, D&D &D 5e beginner box set opened up and you're on the page that we're on in the adventure. Please don't do that, folks. Please don't do that. Please do not. DMs don't like it. DMs put a lot of time into their games. Don't ruin it for them. Player Advocacy 101. All right, a couple more minutes, folks. What are some other encounter ideas? Wondering travelers or merchants, dinosaurs in the land of the lost type of encounter, lots of swarms. We'll have encounters with uh, tactical encounters with uh, terrain features, obviously environmental effects. I love that kind of stuff. That stuff was really introduced in fourth edition and I, I like what fourth edition did with that a swarm of geese <laughs> they're just gonna they're just gonna bludgeon you to death with their with their big old beaks right they're just gonna bludgeon you <laughs> yeah Let's do a, a Q and A for the last couple of minutes. Swarms of swarms, nice, Aaron. That's a good one too. Swarms of swarms of swarms. I, you know, I, I was actually playing in a, I played in a fate game one time, and I do like the fate system with the positive and negative dice. I do like that. And we actually ran into a zombie horde, and we all died. I mean, it was, yeah, it was a massive horde. It was like Walking Dead size zombie horde. I mean, it was like five of us or six of us, and like five hundred zombies. We just we just got obliterated. So I'll take a couple more questions. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Totally appreciate it. I think these uh these longer uh prep streams are definitely uh, working out for sure. Geese or mean bell? Have you ever had an encounter with geese? Uh yeah, I was I was walking a couple months back. And 
all of a sudden there's this I'm like, wow, this that's a high chain link fence as I'm walking down the sidewalk. <clears throat> I had to drop my car off to get my vehicle inspection. I'm walking home and I was walking by, I was coming up to this house and I'm like, wow, this fence is massive. Chain link fence. And, and I, I found out why. There was a German shepherd that ran out of nowhere and just slammed into the fence scared me i mean literally i i i felt like man i'm in trouble here and this this uh german shepherd ran back and then ran back to the fence and jumped and this this fence must have been i'm six foot four and this fence was a couple of feet higher than i am tall and this german shepherd was hanging over the top of the fence trying to get over it and then the owner come running out and was yelling at the dog and telling him to get over here and i just said man i said you got to keep this dog in check man this dog is going to hurt somebody i said i'm just walking down the street I said, now I got to carry my firearm walking down the road. I, and I don't want to do that because we have open carry here in Texas. I don't want to do that. But I don't want to get mangled by a dog to where I'm going to be messed up the rest of my life either. Man, unbelievable. Keep your dog in check, man. But that's the reason why you had an eight foot tall fence. If that fence is any shorter, that dog would have jumped over it, man. I would have been. He saw me walking down the road as a giant, rotis, juicy rotisserie chicken, walking down, <laughs> walking down the sidewalk. Man, that that was that was. I was actually scared. I was like, whoa. I was kind of frozen. I was like, I, I was like, oh my gosh. <clears throat> ain't no, ain't no reason to run because I, 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 I'm not gonna run very fast. So the dog's gonna get me anyway. So I'm just gonna. Go toe to toe with it, I guess. Uh, Slayer's Armor All Savage World's products usable in Slade. Uh, the product description should say uh, if it is, but I, I think I can't be 100% certain, Slayer, but I think Aki did make all of the products for Savage Worlds usable with Slade. I think so. But even if they aren't Slayer, we have a 30-day money-back, uh, you know, return policy. So feel free if something doesn't work, you can always contact me or one of the other guys in support, and we can give you a refund as long as it's within the 30-day uh, refund window. So, all right, everybody. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, next week, we'll break out the maps uh, that Josh has made. I think we're going to go with, uh, I believe the, the, the two regional names that I like the most are the Grounds of Fantasy and Douglas Folly, which I'm actually kind of leaning towards Douglas Folly. I like Douglas Folly. So, yeah. So next week, we'll, we'll start... Uh, you know, putting all of our notes that we've been doing the last several weeks, we'll kind of take all of that and we'll kind of start piecing the puzzle together with our map. So we'll, I'm sure we'll have a couple of maps. So, but everybody, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, I'll be back in about an hour and 15 minutes with Fantasy Grounds Fridays. I've got Paulette and Dominic joining me today. And Dominic is going to be talking about some new upcoming features for Fantasy Grounds, Uni uh, Fantasy Grounds Unity. And, uh, yeah. And then we'll, yeah, we'll have Dominic and Paul out on this week. So thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Totally appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next Friday. Uh, and uh, until then, happy gaming and stay safe. See everyone in one hour. Bye-bye.